Your Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief keeps you informed about what's happening in Annapolis, Anne Arundel County, and Maryland. Local news, local sports, local events, local opinion, and of course, local weather. Your Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief starts now. Good morning. It's Thursday, January 19th, 2023. This is John Frenet, and this is your Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief, presented by Annapolis Subaru and the SPCA of Anne Arundel County. Man, is Maryland weather psycho or what? Cold and rain on Tuesday it was a beautiful day for inauguration yesterday in the 60s, and now cold and rainy again today. I really want some snow. I saw a dandelion actually peeking up in my yard. Not yet, little flower. All right, we do have a little bit of news, so let's get into it, shall we? Well, yesterday was an historical one. Maryland inaugurated its first black governor and the first immigrant lieutenant governor in Westmore and Aruna Miller. The ceremony was really very, very nice, and it was emceed by our own county executive, Stuart Pittman. Oprah was on hand, and she introduced the new governor, and all had a very good day. Now, we're going to tack Oprah's comments and the governor's remarks on at the end of the DNB, so stay tuned and you want to listen to that if you didn't hear it yesterday. And do check out the photos at ionanapolis.net. We had Dave Anderson from DA Photo down there taking some shots for us, and they're really very good. And as I looked at the whole thing, I couldn't help but notice the differences between this inauguration and the one for Governor Hogan eight years ago. Polar opposites. Democrat. Republican, older white guy, younger black dude, sunny in 60, snowing in like 28, and of course, Oprah and no Oprah. Hey, welcome aboard Governor Moore and Lieutenant Governor Miller. We're all cheering for you. Yesterday morning, I got noticed that there is a free festival happening at Maryland Hall on April 22nd, and it is called the Songbird Festival, colon, a woman's experience. It's the brainchild of the Songbird Collective, which is a group of local female musicians, Laura Brino, Donna Denise, Jeanette Lynn, and Meg Murray. Seems pretty cool and kind of Lilith Fairish. Tickets are required, but they are free. We do have all the links at ionanapolis.net, and you can also search for Eventbrite. You want to just search for the Songbird Festival. They are soliciting donations, so if you would like to contribute to helping offset some of the cost of the festival, you can do that. And if you're a business looking to sponsor it, you can do that as well. We do have the GoFundMe link on our site. And another Maryland Hall story. On January 28th, Step Africa, a very cool percussive dance group, will take the stage. But until January 23rd, they're going to be holding a raffle. For every ticket that you buy, you're going to be entered into a raffle for a free master class with performers of Step Africa and Lunch on Maryland Hall. It's a $200 value, and the master class is at 11 a.m. on the 28th. The show is at 7 p.m. on the 28th. Pretty cool. Tickets and more info on the show at MarylandHall.org. And we all know that February 12th is the Super Bowl in Glendale, Arizona, and I am hoping that the Eagles make it. But there is also a Super Bowl right here in Annapolis, and I did pause a little bit there. It is the Soup Er Bowl. For the 17th year, Heritage Baptist Church will host a free Soup Er Bowl with delicious creations from guest chefs and real chefs. Chef Zachary Pope is back again, as he is every year. Now, they do request donations, but they are not required, and 100% of any collective money will go to support the Lighthouse. The gig is from 11.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m., so there is still plenty of time to get wings and get home for the Super Bowl. And Heritage is located at 1740 Forest Drive in Annapolis, kind of catty corner and across Forest Drive from the Safeway. All right, that's all I've got news-wise. Podcast stuff up this weekend on the Local Business Spotlight, the Maryland Curiosity Lab, and Acton Academy. And if I get my act together, I have a bonus pod for Heart Health Month. And up next weekend, it's going to be Crosby Marketing and Communications. And that is a wrap. As always, thank you for being you. And a thank you to our sponsors for the Daily News Brief. Annapolis Subaru, the SPCA of Anne Arundel County, Solar Energy Services, Scout and Molly Sand, Alpha Engineering. All right, so now you need to hang tight because we have George from DC MDVA Weather here with the only locally forecast weather report you're going to find out there. And of course, we have Trevor from Annapolis Makerspace here with your Maker Minutes. 
All that coming up in just a bit, so hang tight. The benefits of a good night's sleep are well documented. Sleeping well prevents weight gain, improves concentration and creativity, and boosts the immune system. So, what keeps you up at night? If you run a business, then the security of your computer network may be one of those things. Threats like ransomware and phishing are becoming increasingly sophisticated and pose a real risk to any business. Don't let these cyber threats keep you up at night. At Alpha, they've been helping their customers sleep better for over 30 years by monitoring in real time and hardening network defenses. And for those irritating IT issues that arise every day, Alpha's just a phone call away. Helping your business run smoothly and helping you sleep better knowing Alpha is on guard. Give Alpha a call to see if they can ease your worries and help you get the rest you deserve. Find them at alphagetsit.com. When you live near Annapolis, you know how fickle the weather can be. So you need a truly local forecast that's accurate and reliable. Forecast right here in Annapolis. DCMDVA weather is not just for today, but for the rest of the week and the weekend too. Now here's George Young of DCMDVA weather with the weather outlook for today and beyond. Hey everyone, this is George with DCMDVA Weather, and this is your Eye on Annapolis forecast for Thursday, January 19th. Yesterday brought great January weather to the Annapolis region, as temps were once again well above average. And while temps will stay above the norm for mid-January standards into at least early next week, we'll have to get through a couple of rainy days in the process. Look for off and on rain today with highs near 50 degrees, ahead of a return to sunshine tomorrow with temps in the low 50s or so, but watch for breezy winds gusting over 25 miles per hour at times, ahead of a sunny but cooler day Saturday to get the weekend started with highs in the mid-40s to be followed by temps in the 45 to 50 degree range Sunday with additional rain coming in the p.m. hours, possibly lasting into Monday morning before skies clear again with sunny highs Monday and Tuesday in the upper 40s to near 50 degrees each day. Okay, that's it for today. This is George Young of DC MDVA Weather. Make it a great day out there today. Stay healthy and be safe. And don't forget, follow DC MDVA Weather on Facebook and Twitter each day for regular updates and also use our website at dcmdvaweather.info and definitely be sure to download our DC MDVA Weather app on all of your devices from either the Apple or Google App Stores so you can always stay weather informed. Hi, I'm Betsy Abraham. My mom and I own and operate Scout Molly's, this amazing little boutique at the Annapolis Town Center, and we're here to help. Whether you are shopping for the beautiful ladies on your holiday list or for yourself, we have something stunning for every occasion, from casual to black tie. From the parade of lights to New Year's Eve, we have the perfect outfit for every event this year. Scout Molly's, Annapolis Town Center. Thank you for shopping local. Every week, makers, crafters, and educators hold events all over the area. Highlighting some of those, here's our Maker Minutes, brought to you by Annapolis Makerspace. Hey, this is Trevor from Annapolis Makerspace with this week's Maker Minutes. At Wolf and the Wolf in Edgewater, on Saturday, check out Paint Your Pet on Glass. Painting a portrait of your pet either on a wine glass or a glass jar. At Knits and Pieces off of Bestgate Road, they've redone their class calendar, so right now it looks like registration is open for classes coming up in February and March, including fixing your mistakes, cardigan sweaters, knitting socks, and double knitting. At Books for International Goodwill off of Defense Highway, tomorrow and Saturday they're having another big book sale. It's a fundraiser for their Pearl Rotary Club. They have thousands of books at great prices and very well organized. Tomorrow, the Creative and Performing Arts of South County in Edgewater is having another art night for ages 7 through 10, as well as another session for ages 11 and up. This session's topic is Neurographic Art, which involves freeform drawing. At Whole Foods in Annapolis, today their Half Pint Kids Club is doing sun butter and jelly pinwheel kebabs. Saturday, they're doing flower up pasta making by hand. Then on Tuesday, their Half Pint Kids Club is doing butterfly cookies. At Art Farm in Annapolis, tonight their first exposure photography class continues. Sunday, they're doing bookmaking, like literal bookmaking, not making bets. Also on Sunday, they have a henna workshop for teens and adults, as well as vibe flow and chill yoga. Then on Wednesday, their virtual botanical drawing for beginners continues. And their winter semester for kids continues. Starting this week, on Saturday, there's experimental art for ages 9 through 12. And continuing this
this week. Also on Saturday, there's Kids Art School for ages 6 through 8. Then on Monday, their Kids Art School for ages 6 through 8 has an evening session. And Monday also has beat making for ages 12 through 16. Tuesday, there's cartooning for ages 9 through 12, as well as digital illustration for ages 13 through 17. And finally, fashion design illustration for ages 9 through 12. Then on Wednesday, there's the Junior Kids Art School for ages 9 through 12. At the Anne Arundel County Public Library system this week, today, Discoveries Library at the Mall has Lego Build and Create Monthly Challenge. In Eastport is a teen art night. Tomorrow, Edgewater is doing seniors crafting, creating a memory box. Saturday, Odenton has build and play with Legos. Monday, Severna Park has community service crafter noon. And Deal has tea for the bees. Winter sewing workshop, gardening for pollinators. And then on Wednesday, Brooklyn Park is doing native plants. Your garden starts inside. Mountain Road has Legos in the library. And Bush Annapolis has makerspace open hours. At Unallocated Space in Severn, tonight they have a virtual happy hour. Tomorrow they have another DEFCON 443 cybersecurity meetup, dealing with InfoSec, Software Defined Radio, Capture the Flag, Ham Radio, Lock Picking, and a little bit of everything involving security, cyber and otherwise. Monday is their project night. Tuesday is their electronics fundamentals class. And then on Wednesday is their open house night. And at Annapolis Makerspace this week, on Tuesday, check out our monthly general meeting both virtual and in-person, for anyone who wants to check out the shop. If you have any questions about the Annapolis Makerspace, the Maker Minutes, or any of these events, feel free to contact me at trevor at makeannapolis.org. And you can find links to all of these events at the Annapolis Makerspace website, also at makeannapolis.org. And whether you're making art, software, or sawdust, or just a mess, chances are you're already a maker. This has been Trevor from Annapolis Makerspace with this week's Maker Minutes. Hello, energy consumers. This is Rick Peters, president of Solar Energy Services. Have you been looking for ways to save money recently? Maybe you should consider solar energy for your home. Or are you waiting for the technology to get cheaper? If so, how long are you going to wait? Today's solar costs less than 20% of what it cost 10 years ago. But while solar prices have declined every year, so have the financial incentives. Bottom line, if you wait for cheaper solar, you're also waiting for lower incentives. Take my home, for example. My solar system was installed in 2010, and it's been paid off for almost five years, and I no longer have to buy any electricity for another 15 to 20 years. If I waited for cheaper solar, I'd still be paying an electric bill. At Solar Energy Services, we have thousands of satisfied customers who are sure glad they didn't wait. So what are you waiting for? Sunshine's a wasted. Call us today for a free solar design at 410-923-6090 or on the web at solarsaves.net. Sunshine, sunshine. Nothing else can make me feel so fine. You've been listening to the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. Tell your friends and colleagues, this is the podcast where you can keep up on the latest with what's going on in Annapolis and Anne Arundel County. And don't forget about our website, IonAnnapolis.net, where you can find even more information. And make sure you follow us on Facebook at All Annapolis and on Twitter at IonAnnapolis. This Daily News Brief podcast comes to you every Monday through Friday at 6 a.m. I can tell you it is such a joy, a joy to be here on this day. And what a joy to be back here in Maryland. I'm back. I have to say, I was just 22 years old when I first came to Maryland. I was starting a new job as a co-anchor of the 6 o'clock news on WJZ-TV. And I left my home in Nashville, and I drove myself here in an Oldsmobile Cutlass to Baltimore. I moved into the third floor at 10109 Windstream Drive, Columbia, Maryland, which at the time was considered this new model city. I was so excited, living away from home for the first time from my family for the very first time. And as I walked around the city of Baltimore that first week, I saw the strangest thing. Their promo campaign was my face on billboards (laughs) and my face on the backs of buses. My face advertising the six o'clock news with Jerry Turner, remember Jerry Turner? (laughs) And a question on the billboards and the buses said, what? is an Oprah. (laughs) Honestly, I didn't really know the answer to that myself. When I moved to Maryland, I had no idea really who I was or what an Oprah was. But I will tell you something, Maryland is where I figured it out. 
The eight years that I lived here were some of the most significant years of my life. I grew up here from a young, naive girl. I truly like had corn growing behind my ears. I was truly green behind the ears and grew into a woman becoming more and more of myself from every challenge and every experience. I found community here at Bethel AME Church every Sunday. I found the freedom to perform and feed my creative spirit. I found my professional calling, sitting alongside Richard Scher for the show, People Are Talking. And though it wasn't the job that I moved here to do, it was the job that sparked my desire to use television to tell stories that would impact people's lives. And I found some of the closest friends of my life here, Maria Shriver and my BFF, Gail King. But most important, in Maryland, I found myself. This state is something special. It's a place where so many others have done and will do exactly what I did. Plant the seeds of their wildest dreams and watch those seeds grow into reality. Maryland is full to the brim with opportunity. It was back then, it is now. And I know that with Wes Moore as your governor, Maryland's best days lie ahead. So let me tell you a little bit about the West Moore that I know, the West that I'm proud to be standing here with today. Well, I met Wes for the first time in 2010 when I interviewed him about his best-selling book. Y'all read the book, right? <laughs> Everybody's gonna wanna read the book now. I was so impressed even then by his integrity and his wisdom. He was wise beyond his years. He knew who he was and he had a vision for who he intended to be and how he wanted to serve. Though I have to say, I was delightfully surprised when he called me last year on January 6th, as a matter of fact, to tell me that he wanted to serve as governor. And I said, you wanna run for governor in this political climate where everybody is so polarized, where there's such vitriol? Look at what's happening right now as we speak because as he was telling me, I could see the CNN screen behind him, and that's the first I knew of the invasion of the Capitol. So then I turned it on, I go, look at what's happening. You want to run in this climate? And he said, exactly, exactly. So I said, go for it, and I'll be here if you need me. I always walk away from a conversation with Westmore with a new perspective with new ideas, with a new way of seeing things, a new burst of positive energy. That's what you do for people. And about five years ago, Wes and our now first lady of Maryland, <laughs> Don Moore, had come to my house for dinner and we had a conversation that stayed with me. I still think about that conversation. We were talking about, as we often do at the table, how to live with purpose and meaning and how to continue that into your later years and how to know that you are spending your precious days in a way that you'll be able to look back with pride and have absolutely never any regret. And I remember, Wes, you said to me, because I had just recently ended the show, and you said, your job title, talk show host, will change. Your titles change throughout your life, you said, but your occupation will also change. But your work, you said, will always be consistent. <laughs> Wes has had quite a few titles in his life. Arthur, Army Captain, CEO, and now, governor. <laughs> the man has worn many hats, but the work he's done, the work he has always done, that has never changed. 
It has not changed, not even a little. He has always been committed to helping young people find purpose and direction in their lives. That's why he started a small business in Baltimore that gave a helping hand to college students who needed one. He's always believed that everyone deserves an equal shot at success, an opportunity to live well, to have lives that are meaningful and provide for their families in the way that he's able to provide for James and Mia. That's why he joined the Robin Hood Foundation, one of the largest anti-poverty organizations in America, and distributed more than $600 million to families in need. He has always loved our country and believed that our country is worth fighting for. That's why he served as a captain and a paratrooper in the 82nd Airborne Division. So you see, this might be his first day as an elected official, but Wes Moore has been a public service servant his entire adult life. And there's so much more to come. He's just getting started. I once asked Wes what service meant to him, and he told me it's the thing that makes your heart beat a little bit faster. Well, something tells me that is you prepare to tell us about your vision for a stronger, safer, and more equitable Maryland, a Maryland that leaves no one behind. As you prepare to serve the state that has meant so much to you, I do believe that your heart must be pumping, 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 <laughs> pumping some wild, ecstatic excitement and love for Maryland and all who abide here. It is my honor to introduce you as my friend, to introduce you as someone who I believe in, as a man I truly respect, and a man I so trust. I trust you. I trust your vision, I trust your leadership, and I want you to know you can trust it too in your new governor, Westmore. Wow, wow, wow. Hello, Maryland! God bless you all. God bless you all. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. And from the bottom of my heart, I want to thank you for the honor that you have bestowed upon me and Aruna Miller as your, ne as your next lieutenant governor. <laughs> President Ferguson. Speaker Adrian Jones, members of the Maryland General Assembly, thank you all. It is an honor to be your partner. And to all of our state workers and all who organized this inauguration, thank you. It is an honor to be your new colleague. To Governor Hogan, we are grateful and thankful for the kindness that you and your team have shown throughout this entire transition period. Thank you for eight years of great service to a state that we both love. <laughs> to my dear friend, Oprah Winfrey, <laughs> a Maryland girl at heart. Thank you for your incredibly kind and gracious introduction. It is an honor to be with you today and always, and thank you for always being in my corner. To, uh, to your new first lady. My amazing wife, Dawn, and to, uh, to the new first babies. Me and James, 
You are, you are my heart, you are my soul, you're my everything, and I love you. As we stand here today, looking out over Lawyers Mall, and you can see right there the memorial to Justice Thurgood Marshall. It's impossible not to think about our past and our path. We're blocks away from the Annapolis docks, where so many enslaved people arrived in this country against their will, and we are standing in front of a capital that was built by their hands. We have made uneven and unimaginable progress since then, and it is a history that has been created by generations of, generations of people whose own history was lost, stolen, or never recorded. But one thing we know is that right now we are standing here in our history, in our shared history, in our collective history, made by people who over the past two centuries, regardless of their origin story to this state, fought and built a state and a country that works for everybody. And there are two people who are here today who embody that spirit, who are sitting right here next to me, two extraordinary women named Hema and Joy. Hema came to this country from India. Joy from Jamaica. Yeah, ma. They immigrated to America with hope in their hearts, not just for themselves, but for future generations. And now, Today, they are sitting here together at the inauguration of their children to become the governor and lieutenant governor of a state that helped to welcome them. Please stand up. Please stand up so everybody can see you both. To Aruna's mom, Hema, and to my mom, Joy, you epitomize everything special about this state. And you are proof that in the state of Maryland, anything is possible. Now, yes, Aruna and my portraits are going to look a little bit different <laughs> from the ones that we've always seen in the Capitol. But that's not the point. This journey has never been about making history. It's about marching forward. Today is not an indictment of the past. Today is a celebration of our collective future. And today, our opportunity to begin this future is so bright it is blinding, but only if we are intentional, inclusive, and disciplined in confronting challenges, making hard choices, and seizing this opportunity in front of us. Our state is truly remarkable. From my birthplace of Montgomery County, to my adoptive home of Baltimore City, From the sandy beaches of the Eastern Shore to the rolling hills of West, yeah, go ahead, Eastern Shore. Go ahead and make yourselves known. <laughs> to the rolling hills of Western Maryland and everywhere in between. Maryland is home to spectacular natural beauty and dynamic industries and people as talented as they are determined. But the truth is, Maryland is asset rich and strategy poor. And for too long, we have left too many people behind. We know it is unacceptable that while Maryland has the highest median income in the country, one in eight of our children live in poverty. 
We know it is unacceptable that in the home of some of the best medical institutions on the planet, that more than 250,000 Marylanders lack health coverage. We've been asked to accept that some of us must be left behind, and that in order for some to win, it means others must lose. And not only that, we've come to expect that the people who have lost will keep losing. We must refuse to accept that. Instead, I'm asking you to believe that Maryland can be different. I'm asking you to believe that Maryland can be bold, and I'm asking you to believe that in this moment, Maryland can lead. I'm asking you to understand that it is time for our policies to be as bold as our aspirations and to confront the fact that we have been offered false choices. We do not have to choose between a competitive economy and an equitable one. Maryland should not be 43rd in unemployment or 44th in the cost of doing business. We should not tolerate an eight to one racial wealth gap, not because it only hurts certain groups, but because it prevents all of us from reaching our full potential. We can attract and retain top industries like aerospace, like clean energy, like cybersecurity, and raise the minimum wage to $15 to help folks feed their families. <laughs> Maryland can reward entrepreneurs who take bold risks and provide stability for families in need. Maryland can be the best place in America for employers and employees. It shouldn't be a choice, it isn't a choice, and the path forward requires us to do both of these things together. And there's another false choice we often hear, that people must choose between feeling safe in their own community and feeling safe in their own skin. Over the last eight years, we have seen the rate of violent crime rise and many Marylanders have grown weary in their faith that governments can actually keep them safe. We can build a police force that moves with appropriate intensity and absolute integrity and full accountability and embrace the fact that we cannot and will not militarize ourselves to safety. We can and we will support our first responders who risk everything to protect us and change the inexcusable fact that Maryland incarcerates more black boys than any other state in this country. We will work with communities from West Baltimore to Westminster to share data so we can keep violent offenders off of our streets, and we can welcome people who have earned a second chance back to our communities. I know what it feels like to have handcuffs on my wrists. <laughs> We're not alone. I felt that when I was 11 years old. I also know what it's like to stand with families and mourn the victims of violent crime. We do not have to choose between being a safe state and a just one. Maryland can and we will be both. We're, we're often told that climate change is a problem for the future or something that you only have to worry about if you, live in, if you live in farmlands or in a flood zone. But climate change is an existential threat and it is happening now in our communities. And so confronting climate change represents another chance for Maryland to lead. We can and we will be a leader in wind technology, in grid electrification, and in clean transit. We will protect our jewel, the Chesapeake Bay, and address toxic air pollution that chokes our cities, and we will put Maryland on track to generate 100% clean energy by 2035 and create thousands of jobs in the process. 
Clean energy will not just be a part of our economy, clean energy will define our economy in Maryland. But that requires everybody, companies, communities, state and local governments, and the people to take bold and decisive action together. And importantly, we do not have to choose between giving our children an excellent education and an equitable one. We will ensure that every single one of our students and every single one of our children knows that this state loves and needs them, and we will create policies that can help them thrive. We will invest in our special education students, our English language learners, our LGBTQIA students, students experiencing homelessness, and every single child who needs a little extra help. And we will see to it that mental and behavioral health challenges do not prevent our children from getting the education that they deserve as well. And while Maryland is home to some of the best and some of the greatest institutions of higher education in this country, something we should be very, very proud of, we must end this myth that young people must attend one of them in order to be successful. That's not the path for every student. To be clear, it wasn't my path. I joined the military when I was 17 years old. I went to a two-year college. And I think things worked out pretty well. <laughs> Every student in Maryland will know that there are paths to their success and their fulfillment. And those paths begin with high quality and highly inclusive schools from pre-K to 12th grade. Now my own journey started in military school where I learned one of my core values service. I went on to lead soldiers in Afghanistan, and my years of service transformed me. My character was strengthened, my vistas were widened, and my leadership was tested. I want every young Marylander of every background and from every community to have the opportunity to serve our state. That's why we will offer a service year option for all high school graduates. A year of service can prepare our young people for their careers and also provide our state with future leaders, public servants that we desperately need. The challenges that we will face will require all of us to answer this call to service, to go out and join the ranks of our teachers and our firefighters, our police officers and our civil servants, our nurses and our union members. You've elected me to serve as your governor, but the work will be done together. Now, fair warning, there are going to be skeptics and people who say that we cannot rise above the toxic partisanship that we see too often in today's politics, where people care more about where the idea came from than is it a good idea. Those are the same voices that told me at the beginning of this campaign, you don't understand how politics works. And to them, I said and I say, we must govern on big principles and not on petty differences. <laughs> that we must govern in a way that addresses the needs of all of our families and not worrying about what, the what a political ideology asks us to believe and asks us to do. That we must govern in a way that we will never forget who it is that we're fighting for and what it is that we're supposed to be fighting for. We know that in this moment we have a chance, we have an opportunity, and we have a unique place and space to do something special. And when people say, well, how do you know that you can do this or how do you know that you can execute upon this in this time of divisiveness, in this time of political vitriol, my answer is this, it's the only way that I've ever led. 
You know a question I never once asked my soldiers when I was leading soldiers in Afghanistan? What's your political party? It didn't matter. We had one job, one goal, in my, and one mission. My job was to unify our unit and go out and accomplish that mission, and it's the same job and responsibility that we have right now. If we are divided, we can't win. But if we are united, we can't lose. Now, we know that we stand here on the cusp and in a time of, of a measure, of, of a historic measure. And we're very humbled by that. We know that in this time, that while for both Aruna and myself, that we're walking in a space that and we're able to see higher because of the shoulders that we're standing on. We also know that is not the assignment. That in this time and in this moment, we have a unique opportunity to lead and to love. We have a unique opportunity to build and to grow. But that opportunity can only happen if we're doing it together. Now is the opportunity that we have to march forward and to march together. And let us march on till victory is won. Today is not the victory. Today is the opportunity. It is our opportunity to lead with love. It is our opportunity to create with compassion. It's our opportunity to fight fearlessly for our future. Maryland, our time is right now. Our time is now to build a state that for those who came before us, that they fought for, and it's a state that leaves no one behind. This is not a slogan, it is the fulfillment of a hope. Marilyn, it's time, let's lead, and let's do it together. God bless you all, and thank you so much.